Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my JavaScript video tutorial. Today, I'm going to answer a lot of the questions you guys have sent me in regards to arrays and functions inside of JavaScript. Especially when it comes to functions, JavaScript acts completely different than any other language that I know of. So we're going to get a lot into the differences so that you're well aware of how it operates. On the left side of the screen, here's just the basic outlay that I always start with whenever I'm doing these tutorials. Nothing really fancy here. And this is a script part where I'm going to go through all the different code and explain everything to you. If you didn't watch part one of this tutorial whenever I completely covered quickly the core version of JavaScript, you should definitely take a look at that. Well, if you want to create an array inside of JavaScript, and this is not going to be a really basic, basic, basic tutorial, this is going to get into some of the intricacies of dealing with arrays and dealing with functions. So for example, if I wanted to create a sample array that was empty, I would do it just like this. I'm going to call this sample array 10, followed with equals, then new, and then array. And let's say I wanted 10 spaces designated inside of this array. I would think it's easier to think of arrays as one big giant box represented by the name of the array full of in this situation 10 little boxes that you're going to put values inside of them. So that's how you would create a basic array with 10 spaces inside of it all of which are empty. You could also come in here and I'm going to call this sample array and create a new array and not designate how many spaces you want inside of it and then you could slowly populate this array by first populating the first, this is called an index or first little box inside of this new array, it always starts with zero, with anything. Because JavaScript is untyped, you can store any type of information inside of this array. It does not matter. So that's one way it totally differs from other computer programming languages. And I'm going to come in here, go like that. And I'm going to put some additional things inside of my array in box 0, 1, and 2. So let's say I want to put 1, 2, 3, main, and then to enforce the fact that I can put any type of data inside of here, even an array itself, I'm going to throw a number inside of here. We briefly went over before the for in looping structure, and what it is being used here for now is to cycle through of all the values that I just created inside of my sample array. And here I'm going to print those values out to the screen, and I just go samp array, and then I'm going to put i inside of brackets. And what i is going to be given as a value as it's looping through this guy is the index numbers. That's what i is going to be equal to each time it iterates through the for in looping structure that we have here. So I just have to put that right here in, in between these brackets and it'll print it out the screen. As you can see right here. And it printed out all of the different values that I stored in that array. Another thing you can easily do inside of JavaScript is to actually shoot out the length of an array. And I'm going to show you how to do really cool things with this later on by just typing in the name of your array followed by the length. And you can see it shoots out on the screen that there are three little boxes that contain values inside of the array that I just put here. I can also create arrays in numerous other different ways. So let's say that I wanted, this is sort of like one of the shortcut ways to create an array. So I'm going to define a new array, new A-R-R-A-Y. And I'm going to actually pass my values right whenever I define this. And that right there is 100% legal, but I could also even shorten this. I'm going to create another array, call it three. And if I surround this guy with brackets, I don't even need to have the new array part there. Just automatically knows that I want to create an array just by putting those square brackets around it. And let's say that I wanted to join two arrays. I just use, let's just create another one. Let's call it samp array. And then followed by the dot operator and then concat. What this will do is it'll tack on this guy right here, samp array 2, to the end of samp array. That's what that function does for you. And if I jump up here and grab this guy, throw it down here, and then change this to samp array 4, and change this to samp array 4, and save that, you'll see that it did that. It joined those two arrays that I created into one called samp array 4. And let's get rid of some of this different code that I have here. If you have any questions, just leave them below and I'll get to them. Okay, so I have my basic array that I started with here, which is samp array. I'm going to show you how to do a couple other things with it. Document right here. I'm going to show you how to join an array and turn it into a string with the join function. And then inside of here, I'm going to define 
between quotes that whenever we join this array into a string, I want all of the different parts of the array to be separated with a space. I could just as easily go in here and put a comma or anything else that I want to put inside of there. Plus, I'm going to copy this and I'll show you two other different functions. You can also slice pieces out of an array with the slice function. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that I want to start at index zero, which is right here, and I want to chop out two parts of the array and print those to screen. And I could also print out the screen the reversed version of this array just simply by coming in here and typing in reverse. And there are no properties needed to be passed in that situation. And then come in here and put these plus signs to concatenate or to join these guys. File save that. And you could see that it shot out array string right like that with the join function and everything separated with a space here starting at index zero, which is my name, it shot out the screen, those two indexes that came after it. So it shot out my name as well as this address. And then here it reversed the array altogether. So now let's get into what's called array splicing, which allows you to delete and also change the values stored in an array. And what I'm gonna do here, just so this is nice and easy to understand, I'm gonna type in num list, and I'm gonna create a new array. And I'm just gonna chop this out here. And just to make it odd, I'm going to put these numbers in here in the wrong order so that we can get into different ways to sort inside of arrays, right like that. So if I wanted to come in here, sort array, and I'm just going to come in here and say num list, followed by sort. It's all kinds of different functions that will really save you a lot of time. Leave that the same then. And then I could also come in here, like I said before, splice numbers out of an array. And how I do that is with the spliced function. And here, I just designate which values I want to knock out of this array. So I'm going to say, starting at index 0, I want to chop out everything through index 3. And let's just go and, and let's just file save this just so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so this guy right here, sort, sorted everything in the array. And that's going to stick. And then I called the splice function. And I said, I want to knock out starting at index 0 through the third item inside of the list and it shot out the screen those values that were spliced out. Now if I come in here and decide that I want to actually array after splice. If I want to actually show you what this new guy looks like I can actually come in here and just leave this as number or num list with that plus sign inside of there and you can see four five six seven eight it actually chopped those guys out of there. Let's say instead you want to use the splice function to jump in and change values that are inside of an index. Of course you can do that and here I'm going to again call splice and this situation I'm going to say that I want to take those values that are stored from the first index here which is zero through the next three and then I put another comma and I'm going to say I want those values that were spliced out to be replaced with these new values and again I'm just going to copy this guy right here shoot him right there file save and you can see after splice, it replaced the 456 that was originally right here. And in place, you can now see these three values that I inserted. And I inserted those right there using the splice function. So those are a whole bunch of different functions you can use with arrays. And I'm also going to get into right now how multi-dimensional arrays work. So let's create one. I'm going to call this multi-array. And here, I'm just going to go in here. And if you want to create a multi-dimensional array, you're going to have to put multiple brackets inside of here. I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five. And then after that square bracket, you're going to define the second part of your multi-dimensional array. And again, you can put any values you want inside of here. And I'm going to show you how to loop through a multi-dimensional array. I'm going to jump in here first and show you exactly how to pull just one value out of this array. So in this situation right here, what I want to do is print out the screen the value that lies in the first, or in this situation, you're actually going to be the second part of this multidimensional array, since this one's going to be zero, this is going to be one. And then I want the third value in that second box pulled out, so that's going to be zero, one, two, three. Based off of that, I'm going to get nine printed to screen. Obviously, I've done this before. Okay, well, what happens if you want to actually print out all values in the multidimensional array? Well, here, I can do this in multiple different ways, but I'm just going to come in here and use the for loop just so you're well acquainted with how that operates. And I'm going to say while i is smaller than the length, remember that guy, for this array. I'm going to continue to iterate through this guy. And then I'm going to come in here and define another value for iteration. And it's going to be called j. And I'm going to continue to iterate through this guy while there are additional 
little boxes in the second part of our multi-dimensional array. Jump down here, document right, and I'm just gonna go multi array, put the brackets, put I inside of there, and then put J inside of here. And that's gonna allow me to iterate through all the values in the multi-dimensional array. As you see, it does right there. One through 10, prints them all out the screen. The reason why they're on different lines is because I got the break statement inside of here. So that's a rundown of a lot of different things you can do with arrays. Now I'm gonna get into some funky things you can do with functions. All right, just as a review, I'm gonna show you how to create a function here. So I'm defining this function that's called add these, and I'm designating that it is going to have potentially two properties that can be passed to it, and it's going to add them together and return them. And again, I know this is a very sophisticated program right here. I'm just gonna say one plus two is equal to, right like that. And then I'm gonna call add. This is how you call a function inside of JavaScript. I'm gonna pass it the values one and two. And you can see that it did all that hard work and it figured out that one plus two is equal to three. Well, you don't think that's impressive. How about if I create a function that'll actually show you how to print multiple values? I'm gonna call this guy add many, and I'm gonna come in here and put a whole bunch of different potential properties or arguments that could be passed over to it. See, what you have to understand is if you don't send, like let's say we this function was called before I even make it here, but if add many was called and they just sent two values, JavaScript's not gonna throw an error. It's gonna say, fine, that's, that's perfectly okay, unless this function somewhere tries to access the value for C, which doesn't exist, and then it'll throw an error. But I'm gonna show you some neat ways to work with a whole bunch of different values so that this function will actually change and mutate based off of how many different arguments are passed to it. This is obviously based off of a question that I received. Okay, so function add many, da 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 da. Well, I'm gonna create a variable called i, and I'm gonna give it the value of one. And I'm gonna create another one called sum, and I'm gonna give it a value of one as well. Then I'm going to introduce you to arguments length. This is something that I do not see people using very often, and it's very neat. What it's going to do is it's going to shoot out the screen exactly how many values were passed, which is extremely useful for this reason. I'm going to create a while loop here, and arguments, length. And I'm going to loop through it based off of the number of arguments that were sent. This allows you to accept a variable number of arguments inside of JavaScript, which is very useful. Plus, argue. And this is actually an array that is passed. This guy right here is turned into an array and it's called arguments. What this is going to allow me to do is jump in here and add up all the different arguments, no matter how many they sent, which is really neat. Sum of arguments. And this guy is just going to be some kind of neat. Let's scroll this up and let's call this function now. Well, let's leave it on the screen so you can see it. Add many. And I'm going to pass it one, comma, and then two, just so you know that I'm not faking something here. And if I file save that, you can see I sent six arguments and it printed six arguments out the screen. And then it summed all of those arguments, which one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus two is equal to seven. But even though it expects six, if I jump in here and only pass five, you can see that it automatically still works. Even though it's expecting six and I pass five, it still works which is really cool. But what is even more cool is I am now sending eight arguments and it actually is still working. See, I was able to come in here and send more arguments than what it was expecting and it still works. So that is a neat little trick that not many people seem to know about. And now I'm gonna get into something that is really bizarre about JavaScript and that is how it handles what we call scope. What you have to understand is JavaScript does not have what we call block level scope. And what we mean by that is, let's say we define a global variable. This is a variable that is going to be accessible since it's outside of any function, it should be accessible anywhere within the program. And in most situations, it is. Now let's say, and I'm not typing in real JavaScript code here. All right, say you create a function called function and try to use this global variable inside of here. It will allow you, and if you wanted to print this out the screen, it would definitely allow you to print one out the screen. The only problem occurs is if you would create another variable inside a function, even if it was somewhere else in your code, and gave it a value of two. And I'm actually gonna show you an example to help you understand better exactly what's going on. This is what we call 
block scope. This is what exists in most computer languages, but it does not work in JavaScript. With block scope, if you create a variable using the same variable name on a global basis as well as on a local basis, normally whenever you would go to print global inside of this function, it would print one. And then since you changed the value to two right here, whenever you call print again, in this situation, it would print two because it changed. And I'm just gonna give you an example so that it makes more sense. Hopefully it makes more sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a local variable and it is going to be called scope test. And I'm gonna give it a value of one. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a function. I'm gonna call it scopey, I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna call document right and I'm gonna say in scopey for the first time. And I'm gonna call scope test. And then I'm going to come in here and define scope test is equal to two. This is whenever JavaScript gets confused. And then I'm going to copy this again, print that. And this is the second time we are going to call document write inside of here to print scope test out to the screen. And here we're going to return true to end this function. And here we're going to make a call to that function. And then here we're going to say out of Scopy. Okay, to really iterate, in most languages where they use block scope, if you would print out document right and scopy first before we reach this line, this would normally print out the screen the value of one. Why? Because it's defined there. Then it would normally print out two here since you changed that. But you're going to see that something different happens. Let's save it. And you can see whenever it comes to this guy right here in scopy first, right there, it prints out undefined. In scopy second, it prints out two. Why? Because you defined scope test right here. And then here out of scopy, which is the name of this function, which is right down here, it's going to print the global value for scope test. And the reason why is all variables defined in a function inside of JavaScript are considered defined before they are given a value. And that is the reason why this sort of mess goes on over here. So how do you correct this? It's actually pretty simple. You could either come in here and define your variables at the beginning of your function, which is what you always should do, lesson learned, or even better yet, use different variable names inside of functions than you use on a global basis. Then you won't have all of these different problems show up. And you can also define functions directly inside of another function, just in case you wanted to do this. Here I'm gonna take a doc right, right like that, and I'm gonna say in S, just to keep that short, in the S function. And I'm gonna try to print scope test inside of this guy. And you're gonna see that if I call this S function right side here, that you're gonna get undefined again because the rules of JavaScript, again, are going to be applied to even functions that are defined inside of other functions. So hopefully that answers a couple of your questions and hopefully you liked and find useful the arguments tool that I showed you in regards to using functions and being able to handle arbitrary number of arguments whenever they're sent to you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.